Hey guys, what's up? This is Panzer Dragon, and today we'll be doing the top 5 best top laners for solo queue. And the last time I did this tier list was in patch 5.5, and there were some nerfs that came between those times, like Scions W and E. Fizz is more oriented to being AP now, instead of like the on-hit build you saw. And a new item called the Black Cleaver is out now, and it's really good on one particular champion, not gonna name him. And of course, there is that little smite top meta kind of thing going on. But anyways, with all that being said, let's get started. Alright, first up is going to be Metal Gear Rumble. Rumble hasn't been touched yet or nerfed yet, so that means he's still going to be a really good jungler, I mean uh, top laner. And the reason he's good in the top lane is because he's really consistent. Like maybe he'll do a bit bad in lane or whatever, but once he gets Leandris, he's going to be doing a lot of damage in team fights. Or if he gets ahead, then he's going to have say something like a Zonia's and be fairly tanky. And of course do a lot of damage. Since his ultimate is a really good zoning tool for the enemies because it does a lot of damage if they stand on it. It also contributes to the Wombo combo, so say if you have said Joani and she ults and then you follow that up with your ultimate, the team fight is probably done at that point. And yeah, his like early game and mid game presence are pretty decent. Actually, his mid game is really good. But his late game, like super late game, is a bit lackluster than compared to say someone like Zerath or an actual mage. And if the enemy has a bunch of tanks who can soak up his damage with magic resist, then it's going to be pretty hard for him to do some damage in that late game. Alright, so number 4 we do have Rampage. Well, Meganar looks like Rampage if you guys ever played those series. But anyways, so what's up with Nar being back in the tier list and why is he here? Okay, so the reason I didn't like him as much was because his Mega Nar form was previously nerfed where he wouldn't last as long in Mega Nar form and I think the tired debuff when he turned back into Mini Nar would last a bit longer. And obviously Mega Nar is the form you want to be in when you're tanking for your team. And so I do feel like that did take a big hit to him, but with this new item called the Black Cleaver and it's really good on his kit since he does a lot of physical damage and also gives him a lot of stats like cooldown reduction, hit point, and even attack damage. I think he's going to be pretty powerful in this patch just because of that item. As in mini nar form, he'll probably be doing a lot of damage more so than he would before. Plus, he's also helping his team by shredding the enemy's armor. Oh, also, I probably wouldn't go smite on him because I think flash is very necessary on him. So don't go smite TP on him in the top lane, I think. But some things I don't like about him is that his mega nar doesn't last as long as before, and mini nar falls off in the late game. Next at number 3 is going to be Count Chocula. Count Chocula is actually a really bad cereal and I don't recommend you ever buying it. But anyways, let's talk a little bit about Vladimir in the top lane. Vladimir's weakness in lane was a bunch of people who could actually kill him until he gets to level 9 where he can out sustain him and trade them very well. The biggest con about Vladimir before was people taking an ignite and that's why people didn't really play him as much before. Since there was a lot of kill potential on him. But now, since it is the League of Tanks in the top lane, or even some bruisers who don't have Ignite anymore, it's going to be pretty hard for people to stop this guy in lane and get to his fullest potential. And everyone knows his ultimate is really good for teamfights as it increases damage for everyone on his team and contributes to that AoE Wombo combo. Plus also having a lot of damage and scaling really good into the late game because of his passive, which gives him free bonus AP and hit point. He also has his pool which is extremely good for teamfights as it can dodge a lot of damage that may be a big factor in killing him. Though there are some things I don't like about Vladimir and first of all it's easy to make picks on him since he doesn't have any escapes. His W gives him invulnerability but it doesn't really give him any kind of movement or mobility. So if he's out too far he can be easily killed but of course if you're a smart player you can avoid that. He also only has 1 CC with his pool, and he has no gap closers, so sometimes he might have to use his flash to get in those team fights and get that hammer plague on everyone. Other than that, he's also one of my champions to play in top lane if I have to play him in ranked. And the other top laner I also play is Epona! From The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, in which I actually never beat because that rock in the first maze actually scared the shit out of me because I was like 4 years old, so I didn't want to play it anymore. So Akram, the only nerf he received was his health regen and mana regen were nerfed just a tiny bit, but that didn't affect him at all, because he still has the crystalline flask to sustain him in the lane, and of course the W to sustain his health. So the nerf really did nothing. And he still ha and he still has his and he still has a really good early game and mid game, and he's really good against melee bruises in the top lane because his Q can outtrade most people. He's also really hard to kill in the lane because of his E, getting movement speed and running away, or if he has his ultimate, he can just use that and pop out of there. 
And once you get this home guard boots, you can make picks around the map very easily. And it's very hard to counter that since he has two gap closers with his E and his ultimate. And a bunch of movement speed, of course. And he's also a very good split pusher because he's hard to kill. Once he gets a lead in the lane, he snowballs really good because he has extremely high mobility with his E and teleport and stuff. So, and so he's going to have a good time ganking mid lane and bottom lane if he can, and just pressuring those other lanes. In the late game, he does kind of fall off because he's not an actual tank, he's more of a bruiser. I feel like tanks are like the best thing in the late game. He has his W to sustain him, of course, from his allies' damage, but I don't think it's enough and his E and R aren't the biggest helpful CC. And like other tanks can obviously provide more CC. Otherwise, it is very annoying to deal with a snowballing Hecarim on the other team. And at number one, we have Aurelia. I can't make a reference here because there's no one that really compares with her except the best I could come up with was Mulan. But Aurelia, again, always dominant in the top lane. She has a huge power spike once she gets her Trinity Force and can kill a lot of people. And of course, in lane, snowballs really hard once she gets some items onto her. And that true damage is going to be super good in that mid game since it's going to do a lot of damage to the squishies. Even if she's a little bit behind, you know, all she really needs is to get that Trinity Force and have her Hiten style with 5 points in it just to do some damage. And honestly, I feel like the most OP thing about Aurelia is that she does have a 2 second stun on her E, which obviously does have its requirements, you need to be lower health than your enemy, but it also has a fairly low cooldown. And she has a lot of sustain with their W and R, so in team fights, if she hits a lot of people or keeps auto attacking, she's gonna have, you know, a bit more hit point than she actually has. But yeah, until they nerf like the stun or maybe some of her damage, I think she's always gonna be good in the top lane. Even if the meta changes, she still has her stats. Alright, next up, we're gonna be doing some honorable mentions, and at number, wait, there's no number, but it's gonna be Riven in this honorable mention. Alright, so whenever I see a Riven on my team, it's usually a Riven main, and they've shown me that she's really good. And I do want to talk about the concept of Riven being an easy champion to play. No, otherwise I'd be playing her in the top lane and understanding every matchup, what to do, the skill combo, what skills to use in each scenario, and not just spamming your keyboard and saying R, Q, W, smash the keyboard and kill somebody. Because I've seen some bad Rivens, like, they think they know what they're doing, but they really don't, and then just rage, and it's like, okay. But if you were a really good Riven player, then you'd probably be High Diamond, Master, or Challenger. Those are the only ones I actually respect. Next up is going to be Cyan. So I feel like Cyan is still good, he's still got his late game, mid game, beast potential tank. But I feel like the nerfs are starting to add up, first of all, you know, his E, they lowered the damage of knocking back a minion into the enemy. That is why he had a super strong laning phase. And now people are opting to max out Q or something. And of course they nerfed his W, the maximum health thing, and the detonation for bursting out people. So, I mean, it does equalize at like a level 13 since people max out his W um, second. But the nerfs are kind of just... But the nerfs are starting to add up and he's kind of falling a bit. Alright, so we're going to add a new segment which is called Avoid. Basically, don't play these champions in solo queue just because you saw them in the LCS. Or something. Anyways, Morgana is going to be first up. The reason you don't play her right now is because there is a bug on her E where if you break the black shield with enough magic damage and that magic damage has CC on it, she still will be CC'd so that's why she's not good right now. Next up is going to be Shivana. Avoid her right now. Even though the smite TP thing might be a thing, um, unless you know what you're doing and like have a coordinated team or whatever, then maybe you can make really good use of it but otherwise you're not going to have flash and you're going to be a prime target for people to gank you. Plus she isn't an incredible laner when laning against people who aren't tanks, so that's also the reason why. But yeah, just don't play her. Next up is going to be Kennen. So he's got a decent laning phase, yes I'll agree to that, but there's only one problem I don't like about Kennen. Do you know what that is? It's that he always requires flash to be useful in any sort of team fight. And if he doesn't have flash, well he's going to run in there and people can like kite him or react to it, and he's not that useful since he can't surprise the enemy. And that's basically it. I would not play him. There's better champions to play. Unless you enjoy him, then go for it. Hey guys, so thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys didn't enjoy this video, maybe you'll, maybe you'll enjoy some other tiers like the jungle, the mid lane, and the finished AD carry. Mid lane and jungle aren't out yet, but you'll definitely see them in the future. So anyways, I am Patrick Dragon. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you guys next time.